Now that we have the fundamentals down, in this chapter we're going to get a bit more adventurous, playing around with the way that oscillators can interact with each other, alternate filter modes, and introducing effects, randomness, and other fun stuff. In this movie, we're going to talk about oscillator sync, having one oscillator automatically reset based on where the waveform is on a second oscillator. I'm going to choose another template for this and start off with the one oscillator, one filter template. Here's our typical sawtooth wave going into our filter. Just for comparison, I'm going to listen to the output of a second sawtooth. Turn it down for now, but we'll use it to fatten up the sound later on. Now you might have noticed this switch on the oscillators called sync. That says, I know you're playing your own waveform, but reset as soon as this other waveform resets. To set up sync, you want to do two things. One, I recommend starting with the bottom switch position. Just click on it to change it. That says use hard sync, which is the most typical, and in my ears, the most musically useful sound. The second thing you want to do is click on this little black switch below it, and this will bring you up a list of what do you want to synchronize this oscillator to. This is about to become a slave to another oscillator, maybe in this case, oscillator two. Now initially, when we look at the waveform, we don't see much difference. Turn it up a little bit so we can see it better. There's our sawtooth. However, when we start to change the pitch of this oscillator, we won't necessarily hear its pitch change, but we will definitely hear its tone change and see its waveform change. Namely, that sawtooth will reset based on the master oscillator. You see where it's starting another waveform and then being told to reset and start again. We're starting to get some more interesting harmonic spectra here as well. Now for oscillator sync to work, the slave must be tuned higher than the master. Otherwise, the slave will not have reached the end of its cycle and started over before it's been told to restart. Now I can demonstrate that here by just reducing the pitch. It's just being told to restart before it's over. So it's really fun if you turn it up, say, an octave. Now you could go ahead and vary this control to dial in a particular timbre that you like. What was far more fun is when you start modulating the frequency of the slave oscillator. It will still keep the same fundamental pitch since it's being resynchronized by the master oscillator, but you get this variation in tone changing over the life of a note. So I'll grab one of our envelopes, drag it down to the FM or frequency modulation input on this oscillator, and just start playing a simple arpeggio. start increasing the FM amount. Play around with the decay to make it happen faster. Let's go ahead and layer the master oscillator back in with that so we have a stable source next to this ripping, moving, varying source. Now the variation between the two waveforms while the frequency of the slave is being enveloped really creates an interesting initial tone. Now again, that was hard sync, and in my mind, that was the most useful one. It tells the slave always resync when you see an edge of your master oscillator. But there is a variation on that, and it's called soft sync. That says only reset if you're close to doing that anyway. And it's a little less predictable, a little more unstable, it doesn't get quite the sound you might expect. You 
see we're just getting detuned oscillators until we hit a good interval. Then when we envelope it, I like hard sync better. Makes a great lead sound. And of course, you can still go ahead and envelope a filter and create other variations on the sound. Go ahead and drag in a second envelope to the modulation input. What do we have here? Let's add a little bit of decay. Very low sustain level. Bit of resonance really makes it very juicy, very animated sound.